right, so these are other tips that I have learned personally going to a, not only our studio, but going to a professional studio. Your picking hand means everything. And what I mean that is if you do not, one, play with emotion, play with talent, and play with knowledge, you will not have a good track. When I say that, I'm going to play some simple chords for you, and you're going to see the difference between, I would say, the average person that's been going to, into a studio these days compared to the professional studio. So, I'm going to play some chords. How, that's how to not play it. How to play it in the studio. You hear how mean and aggressive now, of course, that is if you're going for something lighter, then you go lighter. But pick how you would with the emotion. When I get angry, I do not pick lightly. I pick heavy because somebody in my life has made me mad. So make sure when you guys record that you are putting that emotion in. I've seen way too many people just go in the studio like... It's like, no! So like even like if you were doing chugs, like you would not go like... Hell no, you would go. You have to add that and also make sure when you guys are playing that you're tight. You're very, very tight. You have to be a tight guitarist. You cannot just go in there and just be like. You gotta be like. Because it's gonna come out in the studio. So always work on getting your, your notes as tight as possible. Also, work on getting your notes clear and defined. So when I say that is, if I do like a fancier chord, make sure all of your notes are not out of tune, which I might be out of tune a little bit, who knows, but. Make sure when you strum these kind of notes or these fancier notes that they are clear because you'll hear it in the studio and it will suck and then you can't record anymore. Another helpful tip that I think is really good. Your picking hand, well like I said before, this is what we learned in our studio. I do not pick like this, but we do have someone in our band that does. When you hold on to the guitar, this is not making your picking strong. It's not making it good. It's not making it clear. It's, it's not doing anything for you. I don't care who you've seen play like this. Do not play your guitar with your hand here, unless if you're doing a crazy picking style. But say if I were to say strum, right? And I go. That's me playing just with this, right? So without. The reason why the bigger strokes sound better is because you're nailing down the power. You cannot nail down the power power when you're just going here. So hear the difference? Do not do this. That is a bad habit and if you do that now it's okay but do not do that in the studio because your tracks will not sound as big as you want. These are little things that I learned in the studio that I did not understand that the little things like that is the reason why your track does not sound massive and you gotta learn this guys if you go into the studio and just think you know everything you can't you're not gonna make a good track <laughs> so another thing is make sure oh, I already said that um, picks are important like I said earlier make sure you've picked correctly as well so like I'm using an 88 right now just because that's kind of one of my standards that I use Make sure when you're picking, you're actually kind of having a slant. So if I were to go, this is flat, right? Now I'm going to scrape it, or not scrape it, but I'm going to put the side into it. I'm going to go flat again. Make sure you have a little bit of an angle because not only it comes out better, it comes out crisper, it comes out clearer, it just comes out more aggressive that rather than just straight. 
so yeah, that is another thing as well. If you guys are recording with guitar pedals, overdrives, a noise gate, a crybaby, a delay, make sure, for one, you have a good power source because that power source will define what effect you are using. So make sure you use one that is good. Don't just use some cheap one that, you know, you can use a one spot, but I would probably say a one spot per pedal. So you have as much power as going to that pedal as possible and make sure you use good cables. Um, I use Hosa edge cables and they are great. And just make sure that you do have good cables and when you record, because that is just, you want your tone to be as pure going into the amp as possible. Another thing is you uh, definitely want to take out any pedals that you are not using in that in that board. It may seem like, oh, it's such a hassle to take off your pedal board. Just take it off, unplug them. Do not have them anywhere that would be in the signal because if you don't need it, why would you put it in front of your amp? Because it's just putting more into your signal that you don't need. And I've actually noticed with some of my pedals, when I take some pedals out, my tone is actually a lot clearer. Um, a lot brighter and that is what you would want. Um, you do not want you, your tone to be muddy. So do not have pedals that you don't need in there. Now, this is a super important step that I do personally when practicing and it has made me, I believe, a very good player because I can, I know exactly how I sound because I'm not covering it up with my amp's distortion. If you guys play with distortion, please hear me out on this. You guys, or metal players tend to like playing with a lot of gain, a lot of bass, cut mids, and treble being wherever the hell you want it to be. So what I suggest, that does indeed make you sound bigger and meaner, and that's fine. But the amp should not be the tool that makes you sound mean. You should be. So right now, I'm going to play with the settings that I like right now for playing. <laughs> If I were to practice this and actually find out what I am playing correctly, I would turn back the gain. Yes, you heard me. Turn back the gain. I know. It's like not metal to do that. Turn the bass almost off. Like completely. You do not need that much bass. I have my bass at 9 o'clock now. I am turning my mids up because I believe mids actually kind of lets you know exactly what you're playing. And... You turn your treble up. Now, I'm going to play that same riff. I almost do less gain than that. Now, this tells me exactly how I'm picking and sounding. So like... I can now hear all of my mistakes, all of them. And playing with less gain actually, it has made me pick harder as a player because I'm like, oh, I want that freaking grip because when, if, if I were practicing through a tube amp, that is you know what I would have to do. Um, another thing is even when you play on cleans, cleans actually help you too. So even though you're not playing cleans on your metal track, practice it in cleans and then play it with a little bit of distortion. And it, it just helps you guys. Like It just, it makes me know everything that's going on. This is a thing that I've done and I believe helps me. And I've practiced it multiple ways. I play it on the clean channel. I play with my gain kicked off, my bass down and everything because without the bass, I now hear how tight I'm being. So I think that's super important for you guys. Um, and that is one of my most helpful tips for you. Another thing when practicing and you guys are just making sure that you guys are getting the tightest, best playing possible. No reverb, no delay, no flanger and no crybaby. None of these effects. Don't use any effects while you are practicing. There's no need for it. And you can always do that later when you want to find out what you want to sound like. But if you practice with delay and think you're killing it and you go to record and there's no delay on there and you sound like shit, you will thank me later when you practiced without delay. So yes, I know it seems like common sense, but a lot of people don't seem to do that. So play with nothing. I have nothing on my track right now. So yeah, that is another helpful tip. 